Hello, everybody. The Bakes here. Back with a review for you all. And today, I'm here by next review for the Pokemon Ice Age Double Birth, everyone. And today, we'll be taking a look at our last movie reviews, everybody. That being the, the, the recent Ice Age review, everybody. That being the Ice Age Adventure of Buck Wild. I'll learn what before I get to today's review, everybody. We'll be Make it a big reviewer boy instead of a more depth reviewer one. As uh, I was gonna try to make sure it's a full my usual reviews are one, but my nose been a little bit stuffy this morning here. So mm. yeah, I am still gonna do a review for y'all one, but it's just gonna be a big review instead of a depth one. So yeah. It was everybody. Today's review is gonna be on. Said so these will be all the visuals of Buck Wild here. The last of blue reviews. Um, everyone, despite Disney shutting down Blue Sky Studios, there they did say they would simply continue with projects there, different Blue Sky properties there. The first one would be Ice Age there. And whenever this news first dropped there for Adventure Buck Wild, a lot of people, including myself, were under the impression that it was going to be a TV series. But they eventually got revealed that it was going to be another Ice Age movie there, which a lot of people were not looking forward to there. Especially how the fifth film ended there, how how much of a bad reception that movie got. But what got people even more annoyed there, as it kept going there, is that aside from Simon Pegg there, a lot of the voice cast, or a lot of the original voice actors, actresses from other Ice Age films would not be returned for this project here, so everybody's getting recasted there, so yeah. And there was a lot of news there more news came out there the lot the less people got excited for the movie here of uh eventually got dropped on uh, january uh january 24th 29th there <laughs> and it got pretty much critically panned there with some people even calling it the worst film of the ice age franchise there went my last review by the one we always not looking forward to check out the marathon was going to be collision course Although, I'm not going to lie everyone, based on what I've seen from trailers there, the reception I've heard, Mr. Buckwall comes a pretty close second. As for what I saw in the trailers there, I was not necessarily that impressed with what I saw there. But with that being said, I didn't necessarily enter, I didn't necessarily enter this review with, with relatively high expectations there. I had pretty low expectations there, but... And it towards some optimism there as the uh, to give some credit to the movie there, it was doing something different there and not recycling plot elements from the other Ice Age films there, like Ice Ages 4 and 5 did, so So uh, I said I had low expectations, but as some optimism going to review one, so yeah. I already said chance to check the film out here, but I will acknowledge some positive things first before I get into the criticisms. Um, um I thought they did a good job with Butt's character in this movie here. Um, it felt a little more like his personality from Ice Age Three. Yeah, and <laughs> and I definitely enjoy his character a lot more in this movie than I did in Collision Course. Uh, that's a thumbs up there for me. Um. Um, I like Z. I thought she was a nice addition to the cast there, and she had good chemistry with Buck. Um, and like I said, I will give props to the film for doing something different there compared to the, other, the more recent Ice Age films there, not taking necessarily taking elements for the other film, uh, apply elements for the other films there, but and there were some humorous moments within the movie there. Um, I did get a chuckle out of me. However, that's probably it for the positives I can give for uh, Adventure of Buck Wilder one. On to the criticisms here. First off, the animation by it looks pretty bad there, but there was I did hear that the the animation studio there that made that did the animation work they also did the work for the recent animated. Darwin Kid film there. 
I did check that field out of curiosity there, and well, I thought the animation work was relatively good. There wasn't anything spectacular there, but I thought it was good for streaming, for streaming field there, and they did a good job replicating the look of the books here, look, the look of the books, it's the animation form. Unfortunately, I can't necessarily say the same for the animation worked for the Trebuck Wild there. Now, I was expecting the field to have a bit of a downgrade to animation compared to the other Ice Age fields, but man, it's even anything, that still looks pretty bad. This is arguably the worst animation of the franchise there. And anyway, while I did give props for the film for doing something different there, the overall story not necessarily that engaging. I do feel like that's in due part of the film focusing on the wrong characters there. As despite Buck having his David title, he's not necessarily the main focus of the film. It said that belongs to Crash and A. Which doesn't work for multiple reasons there. But usually with the stuff with the Psych main character gets put in the spot, yeah, spotlight as a main character. Usually doesn't turn out well, and they become more obnoxious than enjoyable there. The only time I can recall where that managed to work out there is with Flying Dory. But about 95% of the time is usually the latter there where they become more annoying than enjoyable. Well, probably some of the most notable examples be, you know, Mater... And be the main focus in Cars 2, and well, the Shane, is Sheen, <laughs> sorry, I might mix up my names here, but Sheen for playing Sheen there, spin off for ser uh, anime series of Disney, uh, of, sorry, Nickelodeon show, Jimmy Neutron, sorry, what, yeah, my, yeah, words mix up in there, but anyways, there's a couple examples of side comedy characters there, you put main characters, and well, they're not be coming as likable there. This especially don't work for Crash A's character as they're considered some of the most disliked characters in the Ice Age franchise there. And while I was able to tolerate them in Ice Ages 2 and 3, I thought they were pretty annoying in Ice Ages 4 and 5 and didn't really contribute much to the overall plot. Now, I won't entirely blame Dizzy or the writers for this film entirely as well that was blue that was still when blue sky was in charge of ice age films there but when you had the two main characters essentially do nothing in the last two films and are considered some of those disliked characters in the franchise then a development that they could possibly have there people are not going to be too open to it Everyone did focus on, you know, on Crash A and the herd there. It was not, at the beginning portion, it was not that they were teed there. And the film did, although the movie did pick up a bit whenever Buck showed up there, so yeah. But speaking of which, everybody, the next up is characters real quick, everybody. Aside from Buck and Z, the rest of the cast of characters really care much for, but uh, already talking about Crash A there. Well, yeah. Don't care much about what goes on them. As for the other returning characters are by, um, he didn't really care much what was going on with them there. Um, and their scenes weren't necessarily that enjoyable there. I mean, the only one I came close to, you know, caring about what was going on with them was uh, Ellie. As the film tries to, the film is a, uh, yeah, kind of going, you know, showing more a little more depth of her relationship with Crash A when they were younger there, or whenever she was adopted by their mom, Possum there. Um, um, but since Crash A aren't necessarily that likable characters there, can't really get invested with the emotional stuff that the movie's tried, yeah, tries to go for in, in regards to their, you know, brother sister relationship there, you know, between Crash A and Ellie there. As for the main trio by... Yeah, they really don't have much. You know, they like I said, they've been relegated to the sidelines there. You know, yeah, which I personally don't mind that much. There's, you know, they really 
worth that or take the field there. Um, as for our bait villain, the worst third body, well, he is a bit of a step up compared to the Dial Birds and Collision Course. He was not necessarily that irritating of a villain there. He's pretty much like the brain from Animaniacs, although not as irritating. So despite having a small cast of characters there, by smaller cast of characters there, uh, for the most part, I feel like flat. And I will briefly address this real quick here as as we do have different characters omitted here from the movie. Like, there's no sign of Peaches or Julian, Shira, Brooke, Scrat, or Rudy. Everyone, the one character I probably look um, the most the way that had, he didn't show up there was Rudy because, you know, uh, y'all know, all remember that in the third film, it was pretty much an essential fo it gave a focus there on Rudy and Bucks probably there. And you think with a film that was Buffy a central role in, you think we would see Rudy, but Rudy doesn't show up in the movie at all there, which was disappointing to see him. All there were the rest of the character woods, I'm not too concerned with there. A Peach and Julian there, I mean, probably most are stable there as they did, as they all know the fifth film, they, uh, they did say that they would get, after they would get married, they would be on their own and travel the world and whatnot, so... It's our still why they don't show up in this movie here. Now, Shira Brooke, they are ahead. Even though I, even though I wasn't actually too invested in their characters there, I do find it a little weird that the film just practically acts like they didn't exist there. So, and they not brought up once, so we really don't know what happened with the two of them there. So, it's finally a little weird of a. As for Square by. Uh, now, everyone apparently, um, there was this one lady that's had a long legal battle over the rights of Scrat there as she's accused Fox in Blue Sky Studios of stealing her character idea, I, character idea called Squat, which was a hybrid character she made of a squirrel and a rat. And she accused Fox of stealing her character idea there, and they killed the cause of Scrat from her. So she's had a, a long legal battle with them there since Disney bought Fox. There, that kind of carried over with them. So, legal reasons, Scrat was kind of left out of production. This film here. That and Disney, Disney's got kind of got other plans on Scrat there. They recently announced a B series of the featured Scrat play up a role of a dad there. So, there are multiple reasons why Scrat's not necessarily present here. So, Although with how limited the animation there was, I really don't know if the film would do, do a good job with his comedic scenes there as Strat so scenes do a lot of slaps of comedy there. But how limited the animation looks there is probably for the best they left about here. The last couple things I'll talk about real quick everybody is the comedy and the voice actor everybody. Um Everybody asked for the color by while there were I said while there were some funny scenes of the filler by the overall comedy for me was on par with collision courses coming there, which was not being that funny. So yeah, a lot of jokes that felt like flat there and not necessarily be that funny. Um it was a little bit more tolerable compared to collision course there, as you know, there were like a million different comedic characters there trying to be funny there, with a lot of their jokes falling flat. But still, the comedy's not that and he works there, you know. So, yeah. As for the voice actor, by him. Now, when Simon Pegg, I thought he did a great job as Buck Wild there. Um, uh, the rest of the voice actors are by um, I thought they did a rather mixed job there, mainly the, mainly the recasting characters there, but, but it was overall a mixed job, everybody, for the, you know, replacements they got for the voice actors for the Tory characters of by him. Well, there were some that did a decent performance there, like the voice actors for Crash A and May there. There were ones that were completely off the sound, nothing like, you know, the previous, uh, the previous voice actor there. 
Cuomo's notable one being the guy who voices Sid there. He sounds completely different compared to the original voice actor there. I mean, that one, I usually don't mind recasting there as long as they can find uh, people that can be able to replicate the voice very well. Or if it's other, the, you know, guides of a reboot there. But this is falls to the forward there. You know. Yeah, like I said, overall, the voice actor was rather mixed there. Some doing a pretty good job there, while others not doing that good. So, yeah. So, overall, by Ice Age, Mitchell Buck Wild. Yeah, it wasn't that irritating of a film there, but. Although, with that being said, by. Um, it'll take some thinking for me uh, whether or not it's the overall worst film in the Ice Age franchise there, but. As while it was bad there, I wasn't necessarily as frustrated with this movie as I was with Collision Course. And I'll have to do some thinking on that there, whether I uh, find out which one's the overall worst film of the franchise there. But with that being said, the Ice Adventure Buck Wild, not that enjoyable film there. Um, Hopefully, the next Ice Age project will be enjoyable there, but I have heard um, people who worked on the film there say they were going to try and listen to the criticism there, try to make a more enjoyable film for the next Ice Age movie there, which I'm not sure if the next movie, another movie, is the best course of action there, but probably best if it's like a TV series there, yeah. because even though I've heard people joke about it back in the past there, Ice Age is pretty much kind of like the next, this generation's is laid before time there, you know. We franchise there, making a sequel as a sequel, not knowing when to quit. So, yeah. And I feel like they should just focus on, like, series, different B series, or maybe do, like, a TV series for Ice Age Shutters there, not doing more films about Pay Your Body, but I guess we'll wait to see there. Anyways, everyone, as for my overall organization, buy for the Ice Age Adventure Buck Wild. It gets the award rated there. Um, the only people I can see. Really enjoy this film there. Maybe the younger viewers of Ice Age there. Uh, or uh, people who are somewhat tolerable of Crash A's character there. Well, aside from that, what this movie's a skip. Don't worry about checking it out. So, yeah. Well, I'd rather put this up for this review by... Um, Uh, even though that this will be the last of the movie reviews or what, there is one more review for the birth of everybody as next time everybody will be concluding things with my first series review for 2022 everybody as I'll be taking a look at Pokemon Journey and Master Journey everybody to conclude things for the Pokemon Ice Age of Birth of one. So, But tell everyone that will be the for now. If you all watch this all here, make sure you like button, new channel, subscribe, notification, shy, cost, and I'll see you all next time. That's our big sale. Peace.